What's going on guys, Pat here. And in today's video, we are finally starting the restoration on my dad's 442. Now this is a very special video and it's one I've been wanting to make for a very long time. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this car in the background of a lot of my videos is kind of a part shelf and you know just an empty shell of a car and wondering hey what's going on with that car what's the story of it and I've briefly mentioned it in some of my videos but this video finally marks the start of restoring uh, this car and the start of the build series so this will be episode one which will be an introduction to the car and uh, the build and maybe we'll work on the car later in the video we'll see what ends up in this video versus future ones. Now, this is my dad's 1967 442. He's had it since, I believe, 1988 or 1989. His uh, first car was actually a 1970 Cutlass Supreme convertible that uh, sadly caught on fire the day he got his license. So he uh, didn't get to enjoy that one much, but he replaced it with this one, I believe, a year or two after that. And he's had this one ever since. He's had this since he was, I believe, a junior in high school. Um, now, in the mid-90s, he took this car apart to do a restoration on it. And uh, also in the mid-90s, I came along and uh, unfortunately put a pause to that. And the car has basically been like this ever since. Um, it's a little more stripped down than it's been uh, over the last, you know, 24 years or so. Um, a few years ago, we had uh, taken this off the frame to put a new trunk pan in it. And uh, we'd taken the engine out at that time and things like that. But for my entire life, this is pretty much how the car has been. It's been, uh, you know, half stripped. Uh, the paint's been stripped off. It's never been running and driving. I never got to go for a ride in this car as a kid. So this is really special for me because this is the car that got me into Oldsmobiles. If it wasn't for this car, the Oldsmobiles wouldn't exist. This channel wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing because even though this car has never been on the road, it's never been driving or anything like that, this car has always left an impact on me. Even though it's all stripped down and it looks like a total mess, I've always thought this car was so cool. I thought this was one of the most interesting cars in a it always turned me on to the old Oldsmobile muscle cars. I remember sitting in this thing as a kid, and even though it had no fenders or hood on it, it didn't even really look like a car. It just left an impact on me that ultimately steered me in the direction that I'm going today. So I'm really excited to finally get going on this thing, and uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get this done relatively quick. Shouldn't take too long to uh, actually get this together. Because um, even though it looks like a mess, it's a very clean starting point, much cleaner than my car was. But uh, hopefully we'll get this together and uh, my dad will be able to go out and enjoy his Oldsmobile and I'll be able to go and uh, enjoy mine with him. So as far as plans for this car, uh, we're going to do a mild rust mod You know, we're still in the beginning uh, stages of the build, so we have some rough ideas of what we want to do to it. Um, but nothing's really set in stone yet. We're just kind of loosely putting together a plan before we get too deep into the build so we can actually, you know, work towards that goal that my dad wants as we're restoring the car. Now, I know we're going to do certain things like fuel injection and an overdrive trans, but you know there's a lot of little details that are still up in the air, and we'll kind of decide as we get further into the build or once we sit down and my dad actually plans out you know, exactly what he wants to do with this car. So I'm going to grab a GoPro. I'm going to take you around the car and uh, give you guys a little more of a look as far as you know what we're working with here. All right, so I'm switched over to the GoPro now. I'm going to take you guys for a quick tour around the car and uh, show you guys what we're working with. Now, the car is pretty stripped down. It's been like this for probably the last five or six years. Like I had said in the intro, we'd taken it off the frame once to replace the trunk pan, uh, which you guys can see back here. And we also have a floor patch sitting in there as well. Now, the metal work on this car shouldn't be too involved. Like I said, not nearly as involved with mine. Um, things like the rockers and most of the floor, the cowl, uh, most of the quarters as well are really clean. Um, I know we're gonna have to get into doing the uh, lower quarter panels, which is gonna be a pain because uh, it's not like the 70 to 72s where that's a readily available part. You have to either find sketchy patch panels and do a lot of work to get them in and looking right, or you have to find a parts car, which uh, we're still exploring right now. We're not sure which route we're gonna go with this. See up here in the wheel wells, uh, we'd already started cutting the uh, bottoms out. Uh, both inner and outer wheel wells on both sides need to be replaced. That's where most of the rod is on this car. 
um, which is a pain because last time we looked, you can't actually get that for Oldsmobiles. You have to get them for Chevelles and kind of massage them in. So uh, once we actually start looking to order parts for this car, we'll see if that's still the case and uh, go from there. But if we have to make uh, Chevelle stuff work, it's really not the end of the world. Uh, we've got the doors sitting over here on a pallet. Uh, they're pretty clean. Uh, we still need to strip the glass out of them before we get them blasted. But you can see the Spanish red that the car was. And you can actually see some of the original color of antique pewter hiding in back there. Uh, we've got the trunk here, uh, factory hood behind that. We actually have the numbers matching engine sitting right here. Um, something I forgot to mention way back when, when I did my uh, engine video for my car was uh, when I had blown up the 455 and we cracked the piston, we actually had gone through and cleaned up the 400 uh, out of this car. And that was in my car for, I think probably seven months or so. I ran it for basically that whole spring and summer of that year. So this engine's all cleaned up and ready to go. But uh, we're putting the 455 out of my car because uh, we're putting a slightly different engine in that one. But we'll get to that once it's actually time to discuss and have that engine um, up front here. Same thing, pretty clean. Uh, it's all stripped down. Obviously the frame's still pretty much together. We have all the suspension and steering linkage and sway bars and stuff in there. Um, I think we're gonna work on the body first and get that blasted and focus on that. So get that stripped down. And once that's all set and we have that on the rotisserie, we'll probably send the frame out to get blasted. Um, we're gonna be doing aftermarket suspension on this, uh, different control arms to fix the geometry, sway bars, stuff like that. Not sure if uh, it'll be stuff I've designed through my company and put on this car, if we're gonna go with someone else's. Um, we'll see, depends how long it takes me to get a set of control arms together for my car and then also this one. Um, but looking in here, I mean, yeah, there's surface rust, but it's really not that bad. Um, as far as the floor goes, the only part that's going to need to be patched is the passenger side, uh, which is what's sitting in the trunk like I showed you guys. Um, everything's really clean. It's uh, exceptionally clean for a New England car, especially one that was outside for a good bit of its life. Um, Nothing really too crazy as far as modifications in here. Like I said, we're thinking about maybe doing an aftermarket transmission like a TKX. Uh, the nice thing about that is it's six speed, just like the T56, but you don't have to cut the floor. Supposedly it'll fit under the TH400 hump. So we'll probably have to put a hole in there for the shifter. But uh, aside from that, hopefully uh, not too much butchering on the car. Uh, now, also with the wheel wells, my dad wants to put a bit of a wider tire and wheel in here. Uh, he's talking about potentially doing some autocross in it. Uh, so we're gonna do what we did on my car where we took the wheel well up against the frame um, we're not going to mini tub the car or get into butchering the frame or anything like that. He wants to have this be more drivable and more streetable and more livable, but also have any mods that we do to it be able to be changed back to stock. We don't want to do anything permanent like we've done on my car. So this is uh, really where the car is at. Um, it's a good starting point. It's uh, definitely much cleaner than my car was. And uh, honestly, it's one of the cleanest shells I've seen. It's really not going to take much work. Uh, to get this thing ready for paint we're going to spend probably more time doing fab work to do custom stuff uh, like the wheel walls and whatnot than we are to actually get the body nice and straight and have it looking right so this is where we're uh, starting at so uh if i'm if we're going to start doing some work on this then uh, that'll be in the next section so see where we end up all right so it actually looks like we're going to get started working on this thing now first up with the car is going to be putting the body up on a rotisserie um, definitely wish we had this uh, for my car last year but oh well uh, I mean, we didn't really need a rotisserie when we were doing my car shell, so I like mounting it to this a little more than on the sawhorses. Um, so as far as what it's going to take to get this thing up and on the rotisserie, uh, most of the body bolts are out. Like I had said, we've already had this on a rotisserie once when we did the trunk pan, but we were borrowing it from a family friend, so we had to give it back, so we just kind of quickly put it back on the frame. Um, I'm pretty sure those are uh, energy suspension bushings holding the body up. It's not even on, like, rubber bushings. Um, so as you can see here, the whole interior is already cleaned out. We just have, like, uh, some old school... Um, GM engineering drawings that are actually like posters we're gonna hang up so we gotta take those out but uh, the body's already braced which is always something that you should do when you're taking the doors off these cars and hanging them up on a rotisserie um, if you take the doors off when it's on the frame it doesn't matter there's enough rigidity there when it's spread across the frame that nothing's gonna happen but once you start supporting it on the ends on rotisserie if you have the doors off you lose a lot of your torsional rigidity um, and longitudinal rigidity and so you're gonna risk tweaking or bending the body and then you go to put the doors back on and they're not gonna close and line up right so we did that way back when we took it off the frame for the first time uh, it's gonna stay now we're gonna leave that in pretty much the whole time it's on the rotisserie um, while it's getting blasted and whatnot so prep work really isn't too involved we just got to clean the stuff out of the trunk uh, which is just that patch panel here and the factory wiring that's out of my car uh, we decided to hold on to that in case we have any uh, weird like uh, obscure connectors that we need to carry onto this harness because um, we're going to use a painless harness in this car as well um, and sometimes they're missing just some of the weird obscure connectors so we decided to keep my original one in case we need some because when we rewired my car we had to take some off so we assume it's probably going to be the same for this one as well so 
we're uh, gonna start taking some of these bolts out and uh, I'll film as we're shifting this thing up onto the rotisserie. So my dad's currently under the car taking out the uh, four-ish body mount bolts that we actually had in there to loosely put it back on the frame. It's his car, so he gets to do all the dirty work this time. I had to suffer on mine, so he gets to suffer on his. But um, got the rotisserie split apart here. Um, it actually splits apart in the middle and each side has three wheels so it's pretty stable even when it's disconnected. So what our current plan is is to uh, lift the back up, put it on this section of the rotisserie, and then uh, we'll lift up the front, try and slide in the uh, rotisserie up there. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that the same uh, just because there's a lot more length in the front. So we might have to just jack up the sides or lift up the front and then engine frame and slide the frame out and then we'll slide this side of the rotisserie in. But, uh, regardless, this is way easier and way smoother than what we did with trying to get my body up on the saw horses. That was super sketchy and it was a pain. So if you have the means, the rotisserie is definitely the way to go. If I could uh, go back in time, I definitely would have bought one when we were working on my car. But um, yeah, it's just super nice to have this uh, for this build. So we're going to keep uh, working and I'll update you guys once we make some progress. <laughs> Body's finally on rotisserie. You probably saw in the time lapse that we got the uh, backside up on the rotisserie like in five minutes, and then it took us like another 30 to get the front on. Uh, I was just like I said beforehand, the nature of the front of the frame, we had to work around uh, all the frame that sticks out past the firewall. But she's finally up, uh, hopefully, for one of the last times on the rotisserie. Um, you know, it's gonna be where we get it blasted and uh, do some of the small fab work. Any of the big fab work, it's gonna go back on the frame to do uh, just so it's nice and rigid. But really convenient to have this thing up on the rotisserie you can jack it up and down rotate it uh, move it around it'll be a lot of help for uh, stripping down and painting the uh, underside of the car but now it's up on the rotisserie you can see uh, just how clean this thing is there's literally no rot rockers are perfect and clean um, most of the quarter is good you can see back here uh, where some of the rot is see that little hole there and then up in the wheel well itself it's Right through, which is pretty common on these cars. My car had the same rot, but the actual underside of the floor on this thing is very clean. There's some undercoating and surface rust, but uh, nothing really too crazy. Like I said, I wish that I had had more pictures or filmed my car way back when, in like 2013 or 14, when we first started doing body work on it and metal work. The car was just a total disaster. Um, you can see some of the rot up here in the passenger front, which is really nothing. It's a, a few little holes. I mean, 
Uh, there's actually a couple more back here as well, but um, it's, it's really nothing crazy. We could have done a couple spot patches if we wanted to, but we're just going to replace the whole thing and integrate it in. Uh, frames over here. It's uh, cool to take a look at this after I was looking at the frames for my car pretty much all last winter. You can start seeing a lot of the differences like in this area. It's entirely different on my car, obviously. Um, I have like the cross brace going across with the uh, mounts in the middle and like the body mounts back here on the outside of the frame we're just kind of gusseted it on um, so that's really interesting but it's cool to see it's cool to see all the little nuances I've never really worked on a muscle car that isn't mine a and B I've never really worked on uh, an earlier gen uh, obviously this being the 67 um, I'm only really familiar with the 70 to 72 stuff um, but yeah frames not too bad either there's some scaling on it but uh no rot anywhere through and through this all get cleaned up uh, with a good dustless blasting um, as far as work on the car that's really uh, all we're going to be doing for this episode uh, as far as what's next is just coordinating to get this thing dustless blasted my dad's having the same issue that i had where um, it's just hard to get a hold of and communicate and schedule with some of the dustless blasters so he's reached out um, he's heard back and then tried to like actually set a date and hasn't heard back after that stuff like that so it's just the logistics of trying to get this uh, all set i think we're gonna get the body and the doors and hood and everything dustless blasted first so we can get it in primer and start doing some metal work and uh, we're just gonna leave the frame for now we're not gonna get them done at the same time we're probably just gonna send this out to get powder coated so we'll have whoever's gonna do the powder coating um just powder coat it uh it's gonna be a lot better than doing my car a because we took everything we learned from my car uh, and we're translating over into this in terms of doing things more efficiently and how to go about things because that was my first time ever restoring and working on a car and that was my first time uh, for my dad in like probably 20 years uh, of working on and restoring a car so um, I think our goal is really within a year, year and a half to have this thing done um, which if we're going to just sit down and focus on it like in all of our free time I think, I think that's doable uh, originally like last summer my dad had talked about potentially having it ready for Oldsmobile Nationals of this year uh, which would be in July I don't think that's going to happen but I think we can get pretty close by the end of 2022, if not spring of 2023. So, uh, yeah, that's really going to do it for this one. Um, we're just trying to figure out getting the dust blasting all set up so we can actually start doing some of the metal work and fab work, which isn't much, but I need to get that done. We're going to paint the body and then we'll put it on the frame and all that stuff. So it's almost backwards of, of doing my car. We're going to do all the fab work and all the cutting and stuff first, then get it painted, then put it on. But that's the benefit of going into a build with a plan, and that's one of my uh, biggest recommendations I give people who are interested in working on cars or taking on a project car is have a plan and get an idea of what you want to do going into it so that way as you're working on the car you can work towards achieving that goal. A big issue with my car is we kept taking it apart and changing things, cutting things, replacing things because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the car for a while and once I finally did then we had to kind of go back through it and make everything right for that goal of being a track oriented pro touring car. So this is going to be a bit of a different build. Still going to be a resto mod, uh, not going to be bone stock by any means, but definitely not going to be as hardcore as my car is. This is going to be much more of the street and cruiser side of the pro touring world uh, than my car. And if you guys want to see uh, more of this build in depth, my dad actually started a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Your Father's Oldsmobile, which is a, a play on some of the advertising from the 60s. Um, so I'll, I'll put the uh, name of that down below if you guys want to go there. I'll leave a link in the description as well. So if you want to see uh, more of this car and this build in depth, uh, definitely go check that out over there. I'm sure he'll talk about some of his past experiences with this car, film as we're going along on this car, talk about you know what his goals and plans are as far as specific parts and uh, things he wants to do with it. So definitely go check that out over there. I'm just going to be posting some of the bigger stuff on my channel. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty like I do with my car. I'm going to leave that for him to get into. So. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like I said, this is a really special video for me. I've been wanting to uh, make this for so long and uh, I'm so excited to finally get going. I've been waiting my whole life to work on this car. And yeah, it's been fun to work on my car and do that build, but this is the car that's always been around my whole life. This is the Oldsmobile that's been in my life since I was born. So I'm really excited to uh, you know, finally get this thing all together and uh, finally go for a ride in it someday after you know, 24, almost 25 years of waiting. So. Hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Feel free to comment what you guys are thinking about this build and if you're excited to see what's to come. And I'll see you guys in the next one.